Spring Thunder is brought to you by the National Wild Turkey Federation, Woodhaven Custom Calls, Federal Premium Ammunition, Muddy Outdoors, ScoutHookWeather.com, and Cabela's. Thanks for joining us this week on Cabela's Spring Thunder. We've got lots of successful hunts to show you on this week's episode. I uh, killed a bird in Iowa on some public land, and Jeff Bryant and his crew have been out in New Mexico hunting on the V7 Ranch for Miriam Gobblers, and they have stacked them up. So we got lots of great turkey hunting action for you, and I hope you enjoy it. May 7th and uh, Kurt and I came in here to his old reliable turkey killing spot and uh, what really worked out this morning is we just brought in those two hen decoys and uh, I think he'd seen enough so we gave Kurt the green light and put a smack down on him so that's number six in three years all on the same farm. A gobbler and three jakes right here. They just went around the corner so we parked back here pop up over this levee and throw the fan at it. <laughs> I hear people all the time talking about wanting to go turkey hunting so they can shoot one in the face. <laughs> That's exactly what that happened to this one here. Wow! <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that now. We hiked up this mountain this morning trying to do an eastern style running gun hunt. And we about walked up under one. We didn't even know where they were roosting. But he's tearing it up right here in the tree. I crawled out here and put the avians out. So hopefully he'll fly down and come over here and check us out. Cold, windy morning here in New Mexico. It's only about 75 yards in this tree. Notice how Jeff changes his calling tactics after getting an initial response. Instead of yelping and trying to get the bird to gobble back at him, he's waiting for the turkey to gobble, then answering him with a series of yelps. This technique is mimicking a hen that's answering that gobbler directly and trying to get him to come over to her position. He's going up. Yeah, he's coming. See him? He's coming. Thank 
looking at. You believe in this right here? <laughs> we tried to do an Easter run and gun hunt this morning. We're up here in beautiful New Mexico up on top of this hill. Have them Avian X Miriam decoys. Hey, I'm telling you. The, the proof right there was in the put. They flew out of the tree. And I mean, he strutted, spitting drums, strutted right all the way in straight to them. I saw him come and I said, he sees them decoys, he's on a rope. And I just quit calling. Oh my goodness. He didn't have a prayer. <laughs> this is why you come to New Mexico. Out here with our dear friends on the V7. That's a, that's, that's a memorable hunt right there if I've ever seen one. My favorite cut style on a diaphragm call is the combo cut and this is the Woodhaven Scorpion. It has that exact cut, it's a three reed call and I pack five, six of these in my vest every day. I like to change out mouth calls as the hunt progresses because one will get saturated with moisture and I'll need to throw another one in a good uh, fresh dry call to get that good crisp sound out of it. But that's my preference for mouth calls. I like the Woodhaven Scorpion a lot. I like that combo cut style in the reeds. It can produce good high-end yelps, cuts, kiki runs, and soft clucks, purrs, whines. It's a perfect all-around call for turkey hunting. There he is. It's, uh, it's about 8.15 right now. And we've literally been on this turkey goblin down here in the same spot for about two hours. He hasn't moved an inch. That's typical. This turkey, the last two mornings, each time he's heard us calling, he's come up within about 100 yards and stood there and gobbled and strutted and expected us to go to him. And I quit calling to him well before 7 o'clock, and it's after 8, and that bird still has not come up here. There he went again. I think we're going to have to go down in there and get right next to him, do some scratching the leaves and stuff, and see if we can bring him in. He just got up again. He's right there. About 100 yards. Sit right here, Corey. I'm going to get right here. Shoot right here, right here to the left.
You gotta be kidding me. That bird has been gobbling down in here in the same spot for four hours. I mean, we talked about it earlier in my opening interview. These turkeys, when they're in the middle of the breeding season, they don't move very far throughout the course of the day and they go to strut zones and stand there and gobble. And as you can tell in the footage, he's gobbling. He's hung up right here. So what I did is the old fighting purr. And that's what brought him in. I'm glad I shot him when I did because he was fixing to get out of here. Let's go look at him. I think that's a two-year-old bird. He's got really short spurs. I mean, they ain't but about a half inch long. They look worn off, but he's got probably 11 inch beard on him. I'll be darned. Look at this stuff in here. This is what that bird was walking through this morning. I mean, there's two, three inches of water down through this bottom. We got about four inches of rain this week. This is where he wanted to be. He did not want to come up in that field with us. Well, it's April 29th, and uh, this is actually my birthday. This is the first turkey I've ever killed on my birthday, believe it or not. For whatever reason, I've always been snake bit on this day and have never managed to kill one. But today, me and Corey got it done down in here and we had to get right down in here in this nasty river bottom right next to him before we could uh, before we could do anything with him. And the, the thing that brought him in is the old fighting purr. Um, it's something I haven't used in a while, but I uh, break it out when I, when I encounter a hung up turkey like this. He came in, he was about 60 yards away and would not budge. So I hit him with that fighting purr and he answered. I set the call down and about two minutes later, here he came, his white head come bobbing through this uh, swamp down in here. And we weren't able to get a ton of footage of him, but that's how it goes when you're not using decoys and they come in looking for you like that. What an awesome hunt down here in the river bottoms, chasing these uh, old Iowa longbeards. That's gonna wrap it up for this week's episode of Cabela's Spring Thunder. The guys up in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New Hampshire, have had some success during their first few weeks of season, so we're gonna be bringing you some of those hunts on these next few episodes, and uh, lots more action yet to come here during the month of May on Spring Thunder. But thanks for joining us this week. If you're not already a member of the NWTF, please click on the link in the corner of our screen, go over to their page and become one. We'll see you next Monday, right back here for the next episode of Cabela's Spring Thunder. Thank you.